When it comes to space travel, there's always a problem. A big problem. And, well, the main one is space. It's way too big. Even traveling at the maximum speed the universe allows, it would take us years to reach the nearest neighboring star. The result is, as Musk said, If we don't improve our pace of progress, I'm definitely going to be dead before we go to Mars. But another human characteristic is finding solutions to big problems. And that's what NASA engineer David Burns has been doing in his spare time. He's produced an engine concept that he says could theoretically accelerate to 99% the speed of light, all without using propellant. If successful, this crazy idea of changing the laws of physics could completely change the way SpaceX, NASA, or any other space company in the world builds spacecraft. How will this engine concept be developed, and if it's going to perform without propellant, how would it work? Let's find out in today's episode. Dr. Burns unveiled the idea in a head-spinning paper posted to NASA's website with the title, Helical Engine. It has been met with skepticism by some, but Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing. I'm comfortable with throwing it out there. If someone says it doesn't work, I'll be the first to say it was worth a shot. According to Dr. Burns, the real purpose of the so-called helical engine would be to travel to distant stars far quicker than any existing tech. He wrote in the paper that this in-space engine could be used for long-term satellite station keeping without refueling. It could also propel spacecraft across interstellar distances, reaching close to the speed of light. Traveling at such speeds, the theoretical machine could carry astronauts to Mars in less than 13 minutes, or to the moon in just over a second. That means the light would struggle to keep up with you, warping your vision in bizarre ways, and everything behind you would appear black, and time would appear to stop altogether, with clocks slowing down to a crawl and planets seemingly ceasing to spin. Which is pretty ludicrous to say the least. And what's more, it does away with rocket fuel altogether. Today's rockets, like those built by NASA and SpaceX, would need tons of propellants like liquid hydrogen or methane to carry people to Mars and beyond. The problem is, the more fuel you stick on the craft, the heavier it is. Modern propellant tanks are far too bulky to take on interstellar flights. Thus, it could be said that if successful, Dr. Burns' absolutely unfathomable idea that sounds like it came from a mad scientist could create a revolution in the rocket industry by way of the helical engine. The engine would use high-tech particle accelerators like those found in Europe's Large Hadron Collider to bypass any sort of propellant dependency. Tiny particles are fired at high speed using electromagnets, recycled back around the engine, and fired again. According to Dr. Burns, using a loophole in the laws of physics, the engine could theoretically reach speeds of around 297 million meters per second. In its simplest terms, the engine works by taking advantage of how mass changes at the speed of light. To get to grips with the principle of Burns' engine, picture a box on a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a rod, along with which a ring can slide. If a spring inside the box gives the ring a push, the ring will slide along the rod one way while the box will recoil in the other. When the ring reaches the end of the box, it will bounce backwards and the box's recoil direction will switch too. This is action-reaction, also known as Newton's third law of motion, and in normal circumstances, it restricts the box to wiggling back and forth. But what if the ring's mass is much greater when it slides in one direction than the other? In this case, it would give the box a greater kick at one end than the other. Action would exceed reaction and the box would accelerate forwards. This mass change isn't prohibited by physics. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that objects says that objects gain mass as they are driven towards the speed of light an effect that must be accounted for in particle accelerators. In fact, a simplistic implementation of Burns' concept would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator, in which ions are swiftly accelerated to relativistic speed during one stroke and decelerated during the other. But Burns thinks it would make more sense to ditch the box and rod and employ the particle accelerator for the lateral as well as the circular movement, in which case the accelerator would need to be shaped like a helix. Which all sounds really great, but 
It's still a theory. It's not without significant practical problems. In fact, it would also need to be big, some 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, and powerful, requiring 165 megawatts of power to generate just one newton of thrust, which is about the same force you use to type on a keyboard. For that reason, the engine would only be able to reach meaningful speeds in the frictionless environment of space. As Burns said, the engine itself would be able to get to 99% the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Propellantless proposals are great, but not new. In the late 70s, Robert Cook, a US inventor, patented an engine that supposedly converted centrifugal force into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Scheuer proposed the EM drive, which he claimed could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Neither concept has been successfully demonstrated and both are widely assumed to be impossible due to violation of the conservation of motion, a core physical law. Martin Tajmar at the Dresden University of Technology in Germany, who has performed tests on the EM drive, believes the helical engine will probably suffer the same problem. All inertial propulsion systems, to my knowledge, never worked in a friction-free environment. This machine makes use of special relativity, unlike the others, which complicates the picture, he says. But unfortunately, there is always action-reaction. Burns has worked on his design in private without any sponsorship from NASA, and he admits his concept is massively inefficient. However, he says there is potential to harvest much of the energy that the accelerator loses in heat and radiation. He also suggests ways that momentum could be conserved, such as the spin of the accelerated ions. I know that it risks being right up there with the EM drive and cold fusion, he says, but you have to be prepared to be embarrassed. It's very difficult to invent something that is new under the sun and actually works. So far, what we do have is a piece of groundwork that could be used to develop such an engine. But with the rate at which aerospace technology is advancing, we shouldn't be surprised if a light speed engine does appear in the future. So until then, let's wait and see. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.